and I drink not because I like alcohol, but because I've recently seen the horrifying underbelly of the world. And I can't go back to blissful ignorance in any other way than through the bottom of a bottle. I can't sleep either. So I'm writing this out to hopefully get some of the poison out of my head. It began with a picture. I'm nobody special, don't get me wrong. Just the opposite. And not a detective, not a cop. Nothing like that. I was just a senior in college with an office job lined up. And I only had to coast out until the end of the year. All that free time made me vulnerable to questions. And the question and the picture that came with it would have just flowed past my mind like every other bit of internet flotsam if not for that peculiar state of aggravated slash boredom I found myself in that freezing February afternoon. Two local girls had recently gone missing. That much I knew. My older friend worked as an intern at the city news channel. And he told me that nobody can make heads or tails of what had happened. Look. He wrote in an email. Someone at another news group sent us this. The cops found two pictures uploaded from their phones after the last time anybody saw them. They're hoping somebody can identify this guy. I remember rolling my eyes. And that was not the first time he'd forwarded me email chains full of internet meme bullshit. He was a sucker for clickbait. And the pictures were the typical scary type. And taken in the dark and limited in scope such as nothing could really be discerned beyond. And look how weird it is. And the first image was taken from directly behind the head of a man with short brown hair. Close enough that the flash illuminated his intermittent scalp in bright white. He appeared to be somewhere dark and slightly foggy. Over his shoulder, a brandished knife could be seen. Held forward for some unknown reason. The second image was of a man lying face down in a hotel bed, surrounded by empty bottles and scattered pills. From his disheveled and sweat matted short brown hair and the shape of the back of his head, it looked to be the same man. Convenient that his face was hidden in both shots, I remember thinking. And behind him was a peeling hotel wall and a mirror that somebody appeared to have spit on. And in the mirror, it was possible to see the man's left arm held out in such a manner that he was taking the picture himself with the cell phone. And given the contacts, I guess that the phone belonged to one of the two missing girls. I tended to not believe things like this, because they really never turned out to be anything. The two girls had likely snuck off to spring break, and this was some sort of prank. Absolute worst case scenario, and this was just some drunk frag guy that they'd hung out with. Let me guess, I wrote back to my friend. An expert thinks this guy was dead when he took the picture of himself. Oh, spooky, right? He's definitely recently dead based on the way his limbs are behaving in that picture, and the discoloration and slight bloating of the skin. But that's not it. It's totally possible to put your camera on a timer to take a picture later. So they had thought that this was a suicide until they noticed something. I look closer by his right hand. I enlarged the image on my monitor and I realized that there was something actually in his hand. But it couldn't be. I printed out the photo to get a better look. And it was what I suspected. The exact same photo we were looking at was in the dead man's hand. An aging clock on the wall had the same hand positions in both images. He had, in his hand, a picture of himself dead. Apparently the same photo that he would take later by himself using the camera's timer. I emailed him back. What are we looking at here? Nobody knows, man. But they crowdsourced finding the wallpaper. And they figured out which hotel it was taken at. Crowdsourced? Yeah, it's a new technique. And they make some clues public and that thousands of people see it online. Eventually somebody recognizes the clue. And then they've got a lead. It's a hotel in Brazil. February was almost over and spring break was coming up. Holy shit. I had the opportunity to do something weird and crazy and prove to my friend that clickbait was just stupid. Dude, I'm gonna go there. Where? That hotel. You're not serious. Why not? 
I've got my passport because my mom pestered me to do it last year. And I've got the money to fly down there because of my summer internship. If there's nothing to see, I'll just hang out on the beach and I'll have a normal spring break. I can give you this specific hotel, but are you sure that you want to do that? That's crazy. The peculiar mix of aggravated boredom and intrigued indignation brewing in me compelled me to say yes. I'd seen so many ridiculous internet myths in my time online, it seemed like an incredible opportunity to finally debunk one. I'd never left the country before, of course, but I fought down the nervousness and did my best to research everything I could. The hotel was near a popular tourist destination, so it wasn't like I was going somewhere horrible. And the beaches were beautiful, if nothing else. The trip I planned was disarmingly familiar. Civilization, air conditioning, and safety shrouded me through the entire flight, the landing, and the disembarkment. I waited for my bag while a bunch of people stood around checking their cell phones, just like at home. And it didn't hit me that I had flown to a foreign country and a different continent until I barged through that last glass door and smacked right into a brutal wall of humid heat. Christ, it was straight winter back at home, and here it was legitimately late summer. I'd chosen my initial clothes poorly, and they immediately became sweat so drapes in a taxi that had no air conditioning in As high as the prices were in the hotel gift shop, and as mass produced and bland as they were, I bought a lighter shirt and some shorts, and then sought refuge in my room. I sat by the wall air conditioner unit until I recovered. And then I looked around my room. My friend had given me the right info. The wallpaper was the same pattern from the photo and the bed. And mirror and the clock were all the right design. Did a guy really commit suicide by a pill in this hotel under mysterious circumstances? And the nearness of it sent a biting air-conditioned shiver down my spine. Scary images sent in email chains online were supposed to be stupid myths. And not something from a specific real location. Once acclimated, I fought the churning fear in my stomach and I forced myself to walk down to the lobby. I had pictures of the two girls on my phone, and I was debating whether to ask the concierge about them, but I didn't have to. Their phones were already on a bulletin board by the front desk, among others. The concierge that I had been considering approaching instead approached me when he saw me studying the pictures. I remember laughing nervously. I couldn't understand what he was saying. Oh, a tourist. Yes, well, I figured I might as well try, or else my friend would mercilessly tease me about flying all the way down here for nothing. I touched the pen papers. These two. Ah, the older Brazilian man sighed. Very stupid, very bad. They went on a hike and they never returned. He waved his hands for a moment before seeming to settle with a sigh of a less accurate word. The jungle. It eats people here. That was something more than the gossip back home about the incident. A hike? Yes, many trails have beautiful sights. Common peaceful bellies the danger beneath. Do not go swimming. The currents are swift. Do not climb. The rocks are loose and the trees untrustworthy. Do not stay out after dark. For the... He paused again and appeared to frown at having to use the same word. The jungle. It eats people. I finish for him. Is it safe to go alone during the day if I stick to the marked past? He glared. But drew lines for me on the local map to show me where the girls had said they went hiking. I don't want to put your picture up here too. He said. But the police did not go looking. They just gave us these papers. We do not risk our own to find these foolish tourists. It is possible those two are alive. If the jungle did not find them at night. Hurt maybe. It's sad. I gulped but put on a brave face. What was I doing? And why? I clutched the local map and adjusted my backpack as the concierge went back to his duties. I should have just gone home. I remember thinking that I wanted to. Or hell, even just the beach. 
but presented with a stark cold fact like that, the police didn't even go look. It felt impossible to just go sit at the beach and ogle women while two fellow American girls were possibly dying at the very same time. There were some guides for hire outside of the hotel, but I felt left but I felt less safe with a stranger than by myself. I couldn't stop thinking about tales of guides tricking people into captivity and selling their organs on the black market. All I had to do was walk a few paths, right? It was stupid. I knew it was stupid. The guides saw my direction, listened to my insistence on going alone, and they looked at me if I was a dead man. When he saw that I was serious, one pressed a survival knife into my hand and shook his head when I tried to pay him. I accepted the gift and put it in my backpack, before heading down the long dirt road towards the tourist hiking pass. This wasn't like the small trails around hotels and campgrounds back home. The jungle here was not a mastered entity, and life was swarming everywhere. The thick clouds of insects hovered together only to be scooped up by flocks of little birds, and perhaps they were bats. I wasn't sure. It was humid as hell, and stuffy under the thick green canopy of gloom and green. But I somehow stumbled my way into a mission and I couldn't turn back without hating myself. A creek about foot wide presented itself a few steps off the path, and I nearly went over to splash and cool myself down before I remembered the concierge's warning. I had nearly went over to splash and cool myself down before I remembered the old man's warnings. I took a long stick and I lowered it, only to have the branch jerked out of my hands. The creek was a foot wide, but impossibly deep, and the current under those plastically floating bubbles was murderous. If the girls had fallen in here, no. Their phones had uploaded photos after they disappeared. Whatever had happened, it had not involved an instant death. Where would they have gone? For hours, I followed the path they indicated to the concierge until I reached a fork in the narrow, overgrown trail. One path followed the black line he'd drawn, and the other led to what looked like a gorgeous waterfall basin. Never in my life had I experienced such a strong, fatal instinct. They had gone the less traveled path, in hopes of taking gorgeous pictures for their online profiles. Thus possibly, it was death by Facebook. Another 20 minutes of exhausting hike later, I found that the wide round basin was accessible down a steep scree and then along a slope of crumbling roots running dirt. I ever so carefully picked my way down, and then I nearly stumbled over a shoe. It was a dirty black American sneaker, and I picked it up to examine it. And jumping back and letting out a short scream, I threw it down on the ground. It had a foot, a goddamn foot. Holding back overwhelming revulsion, I peeled back the tongue of the sneaker to confirm it was a female foot. God, I can still remember how it smelled. I can still remember the swarming flies and budding maggots in that stump of red flesh. Yep, they were dead. Christ. I leaned back against the roots spreading dirt wall behind me and I tried not to throw up. I'd come all the way out here to find a rotten foot. This is why the police had not looked and why they never will. They were right in assuming anybody that didn't come back from this horrible tangle was just plain out dead. I checked my cell phone, and no signal of course. I couldn't see the sun through the maze of greenery above, but the phone said that it was getting late on the schedule that I'd set for myself. Dusk would be coming, and it was time to head back. Even though I'd ignored the warning about climbing, I intended to heed that one about avoiding nighttime. Every single bush and hollock out here hid something alive, and I didn't want to see what might emerge in the dark. And then I heard it. Help! Help. It was the faintest echo through the dense foliage, but I was dead certain then it had been a hopeless female shout. I shouted back a half dozen times, even screaming till my throat was raw but she didn't seem to hear me in return. Or maybe, she was incapable of shouting again. It hit me. One rotting foot didn't mean they both were dead. They could have been both alive, for all I knew, and the foot was a result of some injury or animal attack that had left them stranded and hurt out here. I panicked, 
If only I would have gone home 30 seconds earlier, I would have never kept looking. The waterfall above was beautiful but eerie. There was no climbing up that way, which meant that the girls had likely followed the resulting narrow river if they were unable to climb back to the scree I'd come down from. Judging my footholds and my handholds, I clambered along the clean rock, thankful to be out of the tangle for a time. The progress wasn't hard, just precarious, and I guess that somebody could do it minus a foot if needed. Eventually the terrain became more like a canyon with a river at the bottom, and I was forced to lift up on a dirt again. Here I found an animal trail splitting off in three directions, a cell phone with a cracked screen light half buried. I brushed it up to discover that it still had some battery power and that it was not password protected. The text messages were mostly mundane conversations from the owner to her friends. And the most recent ones were variations of, help and are you getting this? Based on frustration from the lack of signal out here. There was no information there about what had happened. But then I checked the pictures on her camera. Beyond all the typical selfies and the photos of the airport, the flight, and the hotel, there were a few of the jungle I had just traversed, the waterfall basin, and then the very path that I was standing on. And the next picture seemed to be taken from a hiding. And between the leaves, the image showed a man brandishing a knife and peering into the underbrush opposite. I still couldn't see his face, but he was dressed in local clothing I recognized from the shop. Had he seen the girls at the hotel and followed them out here? From the back of the head, it was the same man from the suicide picture. And this was serious. I needed to be ready for a fight or to run. Suddenly tense, I put my backpack down, I hid it under a few bushes, and I withdrew the survival knife the guide had given me. And with the knife out and at the ready in one hand, and the cell phone in the other, I slowly swiped through the photos. And the next few were of the trail I was on, and I followed it step by step, retracing the path the girls had gone. And the man was not in these pictures. They seemed to be photos of landmarks that might help them find their way back. And many were blurry and had been taken in haste. No doubt that they'd been running. I couldn't shout anymore either, not without potentially revealing my presence to the man. Had he cut off one of the girl's feet or something? How had her foot ended up back by the waterfall? Swipe. There's the rock. Swipe. Okay, there's the bend in the path. Swipe. There's the arranged stones to mark a direction when no other landmark would suffice. A few more swipes then. I was back where I had started. The animal trail split off in three directions and I could hear the river out behind the trees. So they had come full circle by accident, realized that they were lost, and then what? Dropped their phone in frustration? Or had they run into a man with a knife again and gotten caught? If there were three paths out here, and two of them looped to one another, that meant that the middle one had to go elsewhere. Right? I heard a noise behind me and I whirled. I saw nobody and nothing. I stared out into the jungle as dust swept a dim shroud between the trees. I had stayed too long, and night was almost upon me. I had to go home. What was I going to do, fight a knife-wielding madman in the dark? I could get the cops and bring down the cavalry on this shed. And then I heard her again. Please, Please help, me. help me! It came from down the middle path. As it became harder and harder to see, I crept down that middle path, and my knife held forward. If there was someone out here, I would only have a split second to strike back or run. The only advantage I had was that they had no idea I was here, and it was as hard for them to see me as it was for me to see them, as long as I only checked my phone every once in a while to keep its light to a minimum. Swipe. A picture of the middle path in gloom. Alright. On a night sometime earlier this week, they had gone this way, and they again looped back somehow to drop this phone. I swept ahead a few more times to see multiple shots of the path that I was on. I stopped at a shot of the knife wielding man from the side. All that could be seen was a silhouette in deep forest dusk. 
looking at this shot disturbed me. Was I witnessing the events leading up to somebody's murder? I swiped back to the past shots and continued following the trail. When I reached the spot where the man's picture had been taken from the side, I heard something crunching out in the darkness. I froze for what felt like an eternity as dusk began to approach night. All my senses told me that somebody was out there. Something was waiting and watching with malicious intent. Perhaps even with glee. I could feel it. As absolute darkness fell, a change came over the humid and the dense air. The birds went quiet, and my ears stopped hearing their shrieking calls with a sudden internal echo. I thought that I'd gone deaf for a moment, but I could still hear my own breathing. Moving step by quiet step back down the path and behind a boulder, I got on my phone to light my way in to check out further pictures. Help! Help. I turned my head suddenly to try to get a beat on the scream in the absolute silence. It sounded closer somehow. Help! Help. This time it came from the opposite direction, a little further away. Help, Help me. me! That one came from right on the path. And that one came from right on the path ahead. Exactly where I'd been about to walk before the sensation of being watched had stopped me in my tracks. It was the same scream every single time. The same annotations, the same length, the same emotion. I swallowed down panic. That girl had died days ago. And someone or something was using her last scream to toy with me. It was insane to think so, but it was my only conclusion. Swiping all the way ahead in the pictures on her phone, I found a photo of an arm over her face. A man was wincing against the flash of the camera. Had they used the flash as a weapon to blind him? I held my arm up as a series of flashes interrupted right in front of my face. I couldn't choose a direction. I ran. Somehow someone or something had snuck right up in front of me. And somehow, it was impossible, bud. Pushing down the trail, I ran in absolute terror until the same scream erupted a few feet ahead of me. Help! Help. It was loud this time. Painfully loud and I sliced in empty darkness. The light from the phone showed nothing ahead. Just unmoving leaves and fronds. I held the knife forward with no idea what I could even do with it. Until a series of flashes went right off behind my head. Was it behind me? I ran for my life. Down the dirt, climb along the river canyon in the dark. Leap up the scree. Spray my ankle. That's what I remember. I limp along the path I'd come down earlier that day. I had lost my backpack and the map inside it. I thought I could remember, but the jungle transforms at night. All the landmarks that I looked for were impossible to find in the darkness, and I knew that something was out there hunting me. Obviously because I'm writing this now, as I said, to get the poison out of my head, I had made it out of there, but not for nearly a day. I spent that night crammed into a small rock hollow with stones piled up to block the entrance, and only enough space for my knife to stab out. All night long, I heard that voice from right outside of my hollow. Laughter and random bits of conversation mimicking what the two girls had said to each other before danger had found them. It had stalked and watched them for hours before night had fallen. A foot, that was all that was left. A foot severed by powerful jaws. When dawn finally rolled around, my sleepless body practically dragged itself on its own accord. I don't fully remember what had happened when I returned to the hotel, but they took care of me, and I did not tell them I had found her cell phone. And you know what? It's been five days and I'm supposed to fly back to the States tomorrow night, but I happen to know that I'll never make it. I sit in my hotel room and I stew in my own nightmare. I can hear it calling from the deep of the night. It's out there mocking me still, waiting, because it knows that I can't escape. All of those pictures were taken before they ever happened. All part of the horror in the jungle where time knows nothing of the strict structure of civilization. I only came out here because of that last picture. The only one that hasn't come true yet. How messed up is that? So I sit here clutching the photo I printed out of the last picture. And I drink. I take pills to knock myself out before it comes for me. 
I'm not killing myself, but I just don't want to be awake when it happens. It's creeping closer now. The cruelest part of this is the clock on the wall. I know the exact moment as it ticks closer and closer, second by second. Another swig. A few more pills. It's slithering up around the bottom of the clock now. The bottom of the basin. The bottom of my heart. Numbing. He said it. And I didn't listen. Jungle wasn't the right word. But he straight up said it. He had told me directly. It eats people here.